I've gone with a blue background for this video. I thought it's all right. Let's talk about mobile threat defense, or specifically Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for mobile devices. It's almost certain that an organization will apply threat protection features like antivirus and anti-malware to their Windows device state. Windows even has anti-malware built in called Windows Defender. But many organizations don't provide that same protection to mobile devices. While mobile devices are normally part of a closed app ecosystem, so they're protected in some way, they're still vulnerable to web-based threats and even SMS-based attacks. They still need to be protected. With Mobile Threat Defense and specifically Defender for Endpoint, we can protect mobile devices from threats. It's able to report on the compliance and threat level of the devices themselves so that you can make decisions around what the device can access. Even better, it doesn't require the device to be enrolled into Intune. It works great on enrolled and unenrolled devices. There are just a couple of steps to get started. So we're going to connect Intune to Defender for Endpoint, onboard devices to Defender for Endpoint, and then configure App Protect policy to leverage compliance information. Let's jump in. So we're just going to start out at security.microsoft.com and get to the security portal. From here, we just need to close the pop-ups, close all the tours, and, and get straight into it. We'll just click on Endpoints and then Device Inventory, and that'll kick off the onboarding that we need to go through. We're going to read through what this says, and then choose Get Started. This is really just going to guide us through a very simple setup process. We need to type the name of a user who's going to be the admin. In this case, it's me. And then we're going to choose the role of that admin, in that case, Security Admin, and then we'll choose Continue. From here, we need to specify a recipient for alert and notification around vulnerabilities. So we'll choose my email address and then specify that I want notifications around alerts and vulnerabilities. And then now we get to add in our Windows devices. In this case, I've chosen to add in the Windows devices. But for the purposes of this demonstration and for certainly this module and this course, we're only talking about iOS and iPadOS and Android devices. So there's certainly no need to add in your Windows devices here. You can choose the second option and specify a manual devices. Once we've done that, we're able to apply security settings and it offers us the opportunity to use the simplified configuration process where it will just set the right things that it thinks we might want to use. In this case, because I've got a very specific set of things that I want to demonstrate to you, I'm going to choose the option to continue using Endpoint Manager and we're going to create our own policies from scratch. Finally, check the settings that we've put in place and then choose Submit. Just takes a few seconds to process all that information and set up our portal for us. And it's all done. We just need to press done and we can move on. So back in the home page, we've got a couple more things we need to do. We're going to jump down into the settings page. So choose settings and then over into endpoints. And from here, we need to go into advanced features. What we're seeing here is that the Microsoft Intune connection is enabled. That's the main thing we need to have for this environment. So no changes required, we'll just move on. The next thing we need to do is make sure that Defender for Endpoint is configured in the Endpoint Manager portal. So we're gonna jump into endpointmanager.microsoft.com, down to Tenant Administration, and then find Connectors and Tokens. From here, Somewhere towards the bottom of that screen, we're going to find Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And here we need to just review the settings that are in place. So firstly, we've got a security profile settings enabled, and we also have some MDM compliance policy settings. So we are connecting Android devices to Defender for Endpoint by default. That's already on. I didn't switch that on now. Same with iOS devices and Windows devices are all connected automatically. It doesn't by default, block unsupported OS versions. But if we scroll down a little bit to the more of the, the middle of that page, we see we've got some app protection policy settings. With this, we can connect Android and iOS devices to Defender for Endpoint to enable app protection policy evaluation. And that's exactly what we're going to use in this module. So let's switch those two on for both of those settings. 
Next, head back to the home page and then apps, and then app protection policies within the policy section. From here, we're going to create a new policy and we're going to choose iOS and iPadOS. Just give it a name. I've gone for iOS app protect policy. We'll choose next. And in this case, I really don't want to specify too much about this app protect policy because we've got a module coming up around app protect policies themselves. But I just want to show you how Defender integrates into this one right now. So we're going to just leave it as the default to target all apps on all device types. And we're going to target the policy to all apps in this case, just to simplify the process. We'll choose next. And in this case, I don't want to make any changes. We'll just choose next. Same with access requirements. I already don't have any specific needs for this policy right now. We'll just choose next. The page I really want to get to is conditional launch. And here in the device conditions at the bottom, you can see we've got the option to add an additional device condition. And this is the max allowed device threat level. So we'll just click that. You can see we now we've got a value that we can add for this. And I'm going to go with low. And then the action. So in the event that the device has a threat level detected by Microsoft Defender for Endpoint or Defender for Business above low, then it will do one of two things. In this case, we've got the choice to block access to the application itself and therefore protect the data, or we can wipe the data from the device itself completely. In this case, it's a, a quite a low threat level that I've chosen to go for, so I'm going to go with block access. Finally, we just need to assign it. So I'm going to go with add groups and then assign it to all users. Choose select and then next. Finally, review the setting that we've got in place and then choose create. All right, so we've got that app protect policy created. Next, we need to deploy Defender for Endpoint to our devices. We'll use the Apple volume purchase program in this case. So in order to deploy this Defender for Endpoint application to our mobile devices, we're going to head over to the Business Manager portal at Apple. So business.apple.com and then very simply head to Apps and Books. And in the search bar, simply search for Microsoft Defender. There it is. Now we need to choose the organization to assign it to and the number of licenses we're going to go for and then we'll choose get all good give it a few seconds to refresh you'll notice that even when i press refresh that it doesn't appear in the list automatically we need to head over to the tenant administration section just here choose connectors and tokens apple vpp tokens and then right click on the token that we've got and then choose sync. Once that's kicked off, it really is a very quick process to synchronize those applications. So back over to apps, back into iOS and iPadOS. And you'll see that the Microsoft Defender app is ready to go. Just a case of deploying that to our devices. So straight into properties. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to assignments, choose edit, and then add all devices. And this is only going to deploy to devices that are capable of receiving this application, in this case, iOS devices. And the only thing I want to make sure is, um, is set is installed as removable set to none. I don't want it to be possible to remove this application from the device. Finally, just press review and save and then save. So when we're deploying Defender for Endpoint or any app really, there's a different user experience for devices that are supervised with Apple Business Manager versus those that aren't. Let's jump in and take a look at what the difference is. Let's see what happens when we install this application on a non-supervised device. I've got a device here which is not supervised by Apple Business Manager. It is enrolled into the portal, but it's not supervised. So it's going to be a slightly different experience for the end user. Let's take a look at what happens. I'm just going to go into the company portal and choose check status. 
and it'll pull down the latest policy, including that application that I've just pushed to all my devices. And because this is not a supervised device, it's actually a device that is just enrolled, we are asked as the end user whether we want to install the application or not. And that's not a great security story there. We want to force the application to be installed, but because we don't own this device, really it's not a supervised device, the user gets a choice. So theoretically I could choose cancel here and it would stop installing it. But in this case, I really want to install this application. So we're going to choose install. Head back over to the home screen. You can see the application starts pushing down to the device and installing. So what we saw there was that even though the device wasn't supervised, we were still able to deploy the Defender app via Endpoint Manager. There's just a few extra steps for the user. So let's see how that contrasts with installing it on a supervised device that we own and manage as a company. Move over to my iPad. You remember earlier on we enrolled this iPad as a supervised device via the Apple Configurator. So from the home screen, we'll just choose settings. And at the top left there, you can see it's a supervised device and it's managed by my organization. Back over to the home screen, we'll choose company portal, devices, and then check status just to get this device synchronizing and pulling, de pulling down that policy that we had. Just give that a few seconds to synchronize. Head back over to the home screen. As you can see, the application just appears on the screen and starts to install and load. No questions for the end user. So in this case right now, I'm just going to tap into MS Defender there and see what options we get when we load this up. So we get to sign in. So I'll just tap my name. And we need to agree to the terms of use. So we'll just tap that and then choose agree. And now we have to set up a VPN. In this case, we're asked and told what a VPN is. And in this case, it's a local loopback VPN. So it's not like a traditional virtual private network that would be used to tunnel your traffic into a, a corporate organization. This really is just a way of protecting traffic by looping it back into the device and scanning it and, and protecting it in that way. So that's what this VPN is all about. Just need to choose allow and then choose allow at the Apple prompt. And also Defender also wants to send us some notifications. So we'll choose that as well. And then the, the device is protected. We're, we're, we're ready to go. Finally, what happens when we try this app protect policy on a device that isn't enrolled into Intune? So we'll just tap Outlook and enter in our UPN or email address. And now it's telling us that we need to authenticate via the Authenticator app. So we'll tap Open Authenticator. In this case, this iPad already has that installed, so it's a very quick process. But if you haven't got it installed, it will take you to the App Store for you to install it. For now, I'll just tap my password and choose sign in and then be prompted via Authenticator on my other device to log in. So as you can see, it's now telling us that the organization is protecting data in this app. That's the standard app protect policy thing that we will learn about in the app protect policy module. But for now, we just know that the policy is applied, which is great news. So open the application again, and it tells us that we need to register the device in order to keep it secure. So we'll just choose register. Very simple process here. And now it says get access. We need to set up Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to gain access to the work or school. We need to go to the App Store and download Defender for Endpoint. And there's a button there to choose to download from the App Store. So I'll just tap that. That leads us straight into the App Store and we can choose the download button on that app. Once it's downloaded, simply press open. Choose the user that's logging into this app from the list. And then we're back to this very familiar screen. Tap, I agree. Allow the VPN. And we need to enable Touch ID for that to happen automatically. Choose allow. And then we're ready to go. As you can see, it says onboarding complete. Return to the app and recheck status or so return to Outlook and then tap recheck status. It says please wait. And that familiar screen, your IT administrator is helping you protect work or school data 
in this app. We get to choose a pin, as that was one of the access requirements. Confirm that pin. And finally, we're asked if we want to enable notifications. This is Outlook, so sounds ideal to enable notifications to me. And we're all done. So there we go. App protect policies enforcing mobile threat defense before users can access data. Why aren't you doing that yet?